wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedipo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. This is going to be a month with a difference in your life. This new month will spark off new dimensions of testimonies in your life. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let's read from Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And verse 2 But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like the fuller's soap. And number 3. And it shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And it shall purify the sons of Levi. And purge them as gold and silver. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now just look at a few things here. For the few minutes we have. I will send my messenger. So he's sent by God. He shall prepare the way before me, he will make ready for my arrival. The Lord whom ye seek. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are in deal with power from on high. So they were waiting. Nobody waited for Jesus to come. He came when it was time for him to come and everybody was surprised to see him come. But the Holy Ghost, they waited. They were seeking for him. They were asked to wait for him. So they were seeking for him. And he said, Whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly, what happened? Suddenly, it happened suddenly. The Holy Ghost came in how? Suddenly. He came in how? Now, this is a very clear picture of the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the messenger of the covenant. He's the one who unfolds the truth of God's word to us, so we can know what we need to do for God to act. And so he's the messenger of the covenant and he came in suddenly into his temple. And what's his mission? The Bible said, He shall sit as a refiner, verse 3, and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So his mission is to purge and purify the people of God so they can worship God acceptably and experience the manifestation of God in their lives. 
And when he truly came, the Bible said they were pricked in their heart. And 3,000 men walked out of sin into righteousness. John chapter 16 said, and when he's come, he will reprove the word of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So his mission is not just the manifestation of healings and deliverances. It is essentially to prepare us ready for heaven. Can I hear your amen? amen. To prepare us how? Ready for heaven. is to purify and purge us. To sanctify us. So we can be worthy of heaven when the trumpet shall sound. So he is our covenant purifier. His mission is to make us ready for the coming of the Lord. Can I hear your Amen. That's God's agenda for us. And if you truly check, you find out in God's word or from God's word that if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. Foundation is very vital to the future of any building. There is no way to patch a crack if it is from the foundation. As you patch it, it reopens. You patch it, it reopens. You patch it, it reopens. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, he said, The foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So that is God's foundation for a great future, for a great destiny in the kingdom. That is no destiny is sure without that sure foundation. Every destiny is running a risk without that foundation. I lived a long time in Kaduna. And then we had one federal housing project. It was a federal housing project in Banawa area. And after the estate was up, they discovered that there was a fault at the foundation. So the government had to order everybody out of that facility and then they brought in a bulldozer to, break, to bring it down. It was a death trap. Foundation. It was painted, yes, but foundation is faulty. The ceiling was in place, but the foundation was faulty. Everything was there, but the foundation was faulty. So when foundation is faulty, destiny is at a risk. And what is the foundation of Christianity? He said, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are is, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. This month, we are going to experience such a visitation from heaven that will culminate in the sanctification of everyone. Everybody is changing level spiritually this month. If you are changing level, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Everyone is changing level spiritually this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone is changing level spiritually this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's God's intention for us. And because evil is not just an issue of habit. Evil is the working of the devil. Evil is not just an habit. And that's why it takes a spiritual force to disarm the forces of evil. Because evil is essentially a product of spiritual activities behind the scene. 
Let me read this scripture to us in Romans chapter 7. And we see how Paul was caught up in this conflict. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. Romans 7 verse 14. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I will, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Is somebody following what I'm talking about? Now, if then I do that which I will not, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that worketh in me. Hmm. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I will not, that I do. Now if I do that which I will not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's the second time, if you look at verse 17. I find then a law that when I will want to do good, evil is present with me. But I truly delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law. That law means force. I see another force. I see another force in my members. Verse 23, warning against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And Paul said, I thank God through Jesus our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now, here is a conflict. It's a world of spiritual conflict. And then he went on and gave us a very clear solution to that conflict. He said, now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So, I had to engage the law of the spirit to disarm the law of sin and death. So the law of sin will continue to have its way until I engage the law of the spirit of life. May I ask you to listen very carefully tonight. Some of those things you think are habits. No. A number of them, if not all of them, are the outworkings of the devil calculated to disqualify you for heaven, make you a victim on the earth. Romans 8, 1 and 2, he said the solution is to engage the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus so as to disarm the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit and his ministry to disarm the law of sin and death. If you look at that, you see, for the law of the spirit, verse 2, Romans 8, 2, that word spirit is capital letter S. For the law of the spirit. Every time you see the spirit written with capital letter S, it means the Holy Spirit. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's so important that we wake up to the fact that it is engaging the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is able to make us overcome the conflict in the world of sin. Praise God. Is somebody awake here today? If you let that foundation go off, your destiny goes off. It is not this bless me, bless me. Now you see, if a building has a faulty foundation, the more treasures you put inside, the more assets you put inside, the more risky it becomes. So God is careful loading your life with blessing beyond your spiritual capacity because you will crash. All the buildings breaking down in Lagos, most of them are not because the designs are faulty. 
Some of them may be, but because they are overloaded. They are pounding yam. They are bringing generator to the first floor and second floor. It wasn't part of the design originally. So it, it, it's gone beyond the low bearing capacity of that structure, so it has to come down. So God watches your foundation to determine what level of blessing he can entrust with you with, because it will just crash. I don't mean going to steal something. I mean, you know, thieves steal, but that's not capacity. That's not anything. It's not a blessing. It's a cause. I'm talking about the blessings of God on your life. It's determined by your spiritual stamina, your right standing with God. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Even in the land of captivity, he will make you a captain. He did that for Daniel, for Shadrach, for Meshach, for Abednego. Because they were solid on ground for God. Come and say solid on ground. Uh-huh. This is what this month is intended to achieve. To get you solid on ground for Christ so you can be in practical command of the issues of life. This is so important. We live 24 hours in spiritual conflict. The enemy is seeking opportunity as much as he can to bring everyone down. But this month, everyone on the way down is coming back up. Yeah. Everyone down in the pit is coming out. Yeah. That is the sure foundation. And what makes it sure is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not just that he has that ministry to us, but we engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit to enjoy his support in ensuring a sound foundation for our life. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? Well, I'm sure you know God can't tell you to be what he knows you cannot be. He said, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. He can tell you to be what he knows you cannot be. He's empowered you and I to be. So all we need to do is to believe that we can be, and then purpose to be, and then engage the help of the Holy Spirit to be. I see you go places. So whatever you don't want in your life, this is your month of opportunity to destroy them forever. Whatever you know displeases God in your life. This is your opportunity to engage the help of the Holy Spirit. To conquer them. And you are conquering them. Yeah. If you are, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. What then are the benefits of purity? The benefits of consecration? The virtues of consecration. Well, number one, it is the only biblical proof of redemption. The only biblical proof of redemption. And how do I mean? If any man be in Christ, what happens? It's a new creature. And what happens? All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if, if all things won't pass away, then you are not in Christ. Oh, in your name we have done this, we have done that. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And they say, get thee from me, I know you not, ye that walk in equity. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 23. By their fruits, ye shall know them. So our fruit is the only proof of our stand. If our fruit is contrary to our stand, then our stand is fake. Matthew 7, 16 to 23. Number two, purity guarantees divine presence, which you know makes all the difference. Two can't work together, said they be agreed. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11, 44 and 45. And then Amos 3, 3. 
two can walk together, he said, they'll be agreed. It guarantees divine presence. Jesus said, he that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. John 8, 28 and 29. I do always the things that please him. So his presence is guaranteed. John 8, 28 and 29. By doing always, not sometime, not most of the time, always the things that please him. Huh? That is the grace every one of us is moving into this month. If you are moving there, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You know, when you carry divine presence, obstacles turn to miracles on their own. When God came down with the people of Israel, the sea saw them, it fled. So the obstacle became a miracle. Because God was in the midst of them. And he said, where are you going to all see? He said, tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord make obstacles tremble before you. So, beginning from this month, I see the things that used to harass you begin to tremble before you. Yeah. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 9. What else is the benefit of purity? Number three, purity guarantees answers to our prayers. His hand is not short that he could not save. His ears are not heavy that he could not hear. But our iniquity have separated us between, between us and God. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. So purity guarantees answers to our prayers. And Psalm 66 verse 18. If I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not answer my prayers. He will not hear my prayers. Psalm 66 verse 18. So purity guarantees answers to prayers. Now number four. What else can be called the benefit of purity? Purity guarantees access to fresh anointing. Come on, say fresh anointing. Uh -huh. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Psalm 45, verse 6 to 8. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So, purity guarantees fresh access to fresh anointing. Psalm 45, verse 6 to 8. Luke chapter 5 and verse 38. He said, New wine must be put into new wine skin. He said, Must. God will only release new wine into new wine skin. Many of us are moving into that new wine level this month. New anointing for new manifestations. New anointing for new manifestations. If that is true, let me hear your loudest amen. Luke chapter 5 and verse 38. Number 5. Purity guarantees access to revelations and divine secrets. Mark 4, 11. Unto us is given to them, I mean, to know the means of the kingdom of God, but to them that are without. All these things are in parables. Who are the ones that are without? Dogs. Everybody say dogs. He said, for without are the dogs. Who are dogs? Those who return back to their vomit. You know that. Mark 4, 11. Unto them that are inside is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them that are outside, all these things are done in parables. So that hearing they may hear, they won't understand. But the Bible said, who are those without? He said, without are the dogs. Say with me, I refuse to be a dog. I refuse to be a dog. I'm no more returning to my vomit. Enough is enough. Somebody's breaking for this time. Now, now, let me tell you, this is the only thing that authenticates Christianity. If you don't have a testimony in your life, your faith is fake. You need the testimony of a changed life. Otherwise, you are just attending a society like uh, Sovio Society of Nigeria. 
you know, biological science teachers, society association of Nigeria, that it's not different. It is the testimony of a changed life that authenticates Christianity. Otherwise, you are just attending Lagos School of Business to learn principles of uh, business exploit. If only on this earth we have benefit, then we are most of all men miserable. Heaven is where we are going, and we must get there. He said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Job was a man that feared God, and God unfolded to him his secrets. And the secrets of the Lord made a star out of Job. Your star will shine this time. Yeah. Number six, purity guarantees access to honor. Everybody say honor. End has come to shame and reproach in your life. Yeah. In First Samuel chapter 9, verse 6, the man Samuel was described as a honorable man. For Samuel 9, 6. And whatever thing he says comes to pass. He was an honorable man. In 1 Samuel 12, and verse 3 to 5, Samuel testified before the whole house of Israel, whose ox have I taken? Whom have I defrauded? Have I received any bread from any man? And they said, no, you have not defrauded us. He said, you are witness. He said, we are witness. He had a public testimony. I believe God is going to give each one here, beginning from now. Yeah. Testimony in your neighborhood. Yeah. Testimony in your workplace. Yeah. Testimony in your business concerns. Yeah. If that is you, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And finally, finally, purity guarantees eternity with Christ in heaven which is the most important of all. By the time you are 120 years old, dear, even if you don't die, your children may bury you. That enough is enough. Let us live our life. Amen. So you don't have more than 120 years here. But we are talking of eternity. Life without end. You won't miss it. Hebrews 9, 27 is appointed unto man once to die and after that what? The judgment. You will not be condemned. 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 I read in closing Revelation 22. Thank you, Jesus. God is putting back every broken foundation this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. Now let's read only verse 27. Revelation 21 and verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, nothing that defies, no abomination, shall by any means enter into that gate. How many want to enter there? You will. You shall enter. You shall enter. That's why this month we are going back to base and taking advantage of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to experience true sanctification. Say with me, true sanctification. Not a makeup. True sanctification. True sanctification by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That shall be our experience. Stand to your feet. How many can see the next level ahead of them? How many want to enter to the next level? How many want to step into the next level? Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Spirit, soul, and body, go ahead and pray. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Spirit, soul, and body. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. 
spirit, soul, and body. Holy Spirit, sanctify me, spirit, soul, and body. Rito prektene borua yeshanda. Glory to the lamp of God. Sanctify me, Jesus. Sanctify me, worthy of heaven. Sanctify me, worthy of your presence. Sanctify me, worthy of answered prayers. Sanctify me, spirit, soul, and body. Glory to the lamp of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you really believe there is a next level ahead of you? Look at any particular resistant habit. And say enough is enough. Fire of the Holy Spirit, burn this off. Burn it off now. Look at it and pray from the depth of your heart. Burn it off now. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn this off now. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn this off now. Lift up your voice and pray. Every unwanted habit. It is the working of the devil. Rekoti brakenetazia. Oh, ya shada, brekenete, superede, yakota breke, lo brekenetezia, ye shada brange, ye kuja, retama, so pleke, aredo, bareto, ekla croctene borua, ye shoda brade, yakoro berete, so brekenetezia, hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Bishop David Oyedikpo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploit, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedikpo, 216-88, Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Or call 817-9670, 817